Hey everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Five Questions with the Paulists. I'm Mike Hayes. It is always lovely to be in New York City in the fall. At least that's what I think. And so today we're going to go there into St. Paul the Apostle Church, where Father James Deluzio is with us. Father James, how are you? Very well, Michael. Thank you. It's great to chat with you today. Cool. So let's get right into it. Question one, you're a missionary and your ministry came to sort of a sharp halt during the pandemic. Uh, talk about one way that your ministry had a shift because of COVID. Oh, a great deal. Uh, it was like a whirlwind. Suddenly how I was hit had to cancel missions. And it just so happened that at that moment, the parish needed a sacristan. And so our pastor, Rick Walsh, said, would you like this, this sacristan job for the year since I would, would not be able to go out? on missions, it would bring an in income for the Paulist. I was really thinking of working at Starbucks or getting sort of a little more out in the world, but uh, I ended up with the sacristan job, which included hospital ministry. So uh -huh. I would I'd have Wednesdays visiting patients in the hospital. I'm still doing that. I'm going to complete the sacristan hospital work at the end of this year. And then I will move on to my new role which is his director of the Paulist Office for Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations. Yeah. But all your, your Luke Live stuff and things like that, that all came to a, a sharp halt, right? Well, in terms of live, but what I did do is I created um, a YouTube, two YouTube programs, uh, Luke Live Online, where mm -hmm. I would give a five minute pericope and about a five minute commentary. You can access that on my YouTube page, James Deluzio. Look for playlist Luke Live Online. And I also, actually, I started first a young at heart, uh, reading nursery rhymes, stories, songs, poems, Mother Goose, Aesop's fables, limericks, larks, stories of the great operas, and such. And that's also on YouTube, James Deluzio. Look for the playlist young at heart. And that actually helped me a lot. I... I, initially, I had a lot more followers than I do now, but people said it was just really, it was a nice, good diversion and a lightheartedness, especially in those first months of the pandemic. So that's what I was doing. Sacristan Hospital Work, Luke Live Online, and Young at Heart Online. All those things were great helps to me personally, actually. I watched those a lot during the pandemic. Oh, oh, that's nice to know. Yeah. I've now limited uh, Luke Live to Tuesdays, Tuesday nights, and Young at Heart to Friday nights. Nice. And so, too, you just mentioned you're, you're starting as the new director of the Ecumenical Interfaith Office. So what, what's one way that your work as a missionary will help you in your new ministry? Well, I, I'm pleased to say that's always been an important part of my Paulist ministry. So I've infused my discussions of Luke when I did the Luke Live missions, which primarily were proclaiming the gospel of Luke from memory in segments, stopping for commentary, questions and answers, and then song meditations because I'm a singer. So I did sacred and secular songs. But I always infused the commentary with how are, how are people from other faiths or denominations, how would they enter into this idea? Obviously, if they're another faith, it's not this text, but where are we finding, I call them points of intersection. And I, I peppered and seasoned my talks and my preaching with a lot of that. So I feel um, that that's certainly something I can bring into the, the dialogue. So question three, what, what was your favorite comfort food during the pandemic? What kind of got you through? Well, as you know, I live in a house, a rectory of 23 Paulists. So our, all our meals are prepared. So it's not like I don't, I could have access to the kitchen, but it's rare to have so. So I can't say that I, I claimed it, uh, but in general, my uh, comfort food is uh, macaroni and cheese. Mm. <laughs> Always good. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, question four, you, you've memorized the entire Gospel of Luke for, for your series, Luke Lives. Uh, what was your process in doing that? Well, I knew I had to make it in segments, so that was very helpful. And I started gradually over the years. So 
for the first couple of years, it was just, I went to some favorite uh, sections, favorite chapters. Then I started elaborating with the Advent Christmas. So then it was the first six chapters um, fully and then moving on into others. So if you ask me today to just start from the first verse to the very, very last, I couldn't do it for you. I can definitely do one through 12. And then I'd have to review because I ended up creating four different missions with different segments. And I didn't get to do the last two portions of Luke very often. So what that's where we are. But how did I do it? Repetition, repetition, repetition. And I think for memorization, you have to find uh, two things for me, a gut feeling. Um, and once you get the feeling, the words come more easily through the repetition. And the other is to look for uh, similar consonants. So like um, sending forth and they were satisfied. It may have been two words that could get me to go from one sentence to the other. Oh, I got it. Because yeah. they both began with an S. Cool. One of, one of my friends memorized the Gospel of Mark and did some similar stuff uh, with that. And he said that he would just keep a copy of the scripture on the front table. He said, I'm leaving a copy of the New American Bible here. Yes. Just in case. Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> sure enough. Well, good for him. Did he travel around? With he did, his... yeah. It was good. good yeah. for him. Yeah. Good and so him. question five uh, is the question we've been asking everybody lately is that you've been stranded on a desert island and you have the scriptures with you already. Uh, so what's one other book that you'd want to have with you during that time? It's hard, of course, to pick one other. I, I would pick J. M. Roberts' History of the World, mm. because I love and I think it's so important to put the scriptures in conversation with the the realities of of human history. Uh, I'm very intrigued by um, God and evolution, uh, and his history of the world starts with that, <laughs> and and then just brings us to all the the evidences of where the gospel permeated in a society or when it got completely lost. So I think I would continue to keep those two books open and in conversation. Yeah, it's good putting them in conversation. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. And so those are five questions of Father James Deluzio. Father James, Number one, we're praying for you in your uh, your new work as you head to do the. Uh, is you still going to be in New York, or are you going somewhere else? Uh, thankfully, I'm still going to be based in New York. I think the opportunities for multi faith, especially on uh, ecumenism, are are just ripe here. So I'm very glad to stay in one place. I'm getting too old, I think, to travel as well. <laughs> so. Well, when I, when I worked at Busted Halo, the Office of Ecumenical and Interfaith Affairs was right across the hall from me. So it's nice to see that that is returning to New York City uh, yeah. with, uh, with you taking the lead there. So we'll, we'll offer you prayers for that. Keep us. And, uh, you know, I have a very ecumenical and interfaith family. So uh, that's near and dear to my heart as well. So oh, keep them beautiful. in your prayers. I will. I will, Mike. Thank you so much. All right. So this has been Five Questions with the Paulist Fathers. I'm Mike Hayes. He's Father James Deluzio, the new director of the Paulist Office of Ecumenical and Interfaith Affairs, and we will see you all again soon.